Hey there, travelers. I'm so excited because today we're at the Cape Wildlife Center. It's a rehabilitation center for local wildlife. If we're lucky, we're gonna see fox, raccoons, seagulls, and even river otters. Hey there, travelers. I'm here with the director of the Cape Wildlife Center, Deb. Deb, thank you so much for having us, first and foremost. Oh, our pleasure. We're so glad you're, you're out here. We'd love to show people what we do. It's a fascinating place. Can you tell me a little bit about the Cape Wildlife Center? Yeah, sure. We're on four and a half acres, and that gives us lots of room for all sorts of different animal habitats. We have, at any given time, slow season, like wintertime, we may have 60 to 80 animals. In the middle of spring, we'll have 250. So we need lots of room for all sorts of different habitats. We have foxes and possums and songbirds and seabirds and just about everything in between. So uh, we, they're basically all over the property. You'll find different habitats, each customized to the animals that, that are being treated there. That's incredible. I can't wait to see, you know, how different habitats are designed for that specific animal. Oh, it's, it's amazing. You see things like, even things you don't think about, like Lynn will set them up for the squirrels. She, young squirrels have to learn to climb. And one of the basic reasons they get injured a lot of times is they'll fall. So if their habitats don't have branches and trees to climb on and we let them go, they're not equipped to survive in the wild. So that's the habitats are all designed to give them the skills they need to survive. Today we're gonna to see the creative ways in which the Cape Wildlife Center makes their rescues feel at home. Our first stop is a smart animal that loves to make its home in chimneys. No travelers, it's not Santa Claus, it's a raccoon. Hey there travelers, we're really lucky because I'm here with Lynn, the Director of Wildlife Rehabilitation, and she is letting us see the raccoons get fed. Lynn, can you tell us a little bit about what they eat? Sure. They're a bit like us. They'll eat a bit of everything. So what we do is provide them with everything. They just tend to have their things a little raw, you know, raw veggies, raw fish, raw meats. At the moment, they have a bit of everything. Plus, because we still have animals that are growing, we want to make sure that they get so much food on board because they're going to go out there and face learning to eat all by themselves. We want them to go out with a bit of weight on just so they transition back into the wild. That makes me feel better because I know for the first week or two out there, it's going to be tough because all of a sudden the food doesn't come in in buckets and could be put, in, put into a food trough. They have to go and find it. And that can be quite challenging, especially as we get into the world. Let's look at this guy. We've got, that's why we have double wash from everything. He's escaping. <laughs> yes. Think he might have gone with us. As much as we try, we never do as good a job as mum. You know, uh, we can fit these animals up for a life out there, but we've missed out on some very essential path, or parts of development. And that includes just learning how to navigate your world safely. When they're younger, we have to take over really. We are doing what mum would do, and she still lactates, so she still feeds them. So we do that with a bottle. So these, these guys were all bottle fed, so they have a much closer relationship with us. That relationship will not last once we let them release them. You know, they, they will go back to being totally wild and see us as threats. These guys don't have to go maybe through that transition as much as these guys. That's interesting. So, so again, you can see such a contrast. So I decided to keep those guys over there because they're also where people walk by the most. And you know, I figured, well, these guys have a little bit of better chance just to really, you know, withdraw from humans, recognizing that they are good people and realize, really, we're not such good people for them anyway. While the raccoons were super cute, Lynn reminded me of all the other great animals they have here. The Cape Wildlife Center designs habitats meant to help raccoons return to the wild. Lynn takes us to the duck habitat where we learn how they acclimate these birds to life on saltwater. Can you imagine living on fresh water if you're a duck, a, a sea duck like this eider over here? So you live on fresh water here and then you get jettisoned out, you know, be free, be happy, and you go and take your first drink of salt water that you haven't had for weeks or months. I'm not used to this. Exactly. Because they have to make they have to make sure that their salt glands are all primed and ready to cope with oh. drinking salt water because what happens when we drink salt water? I almost throw up. Uh, yeah, exactly. So we have an Ida here who's a, a, salt, a seabird, and she lost part of her lower mandible. 
so our veterinarian had to amputate part of it and so you can see the top one's okay but her lower, lower jaw is a bit low it's a bit shortened and also she had some terrible time with her plumage but she's coming along beautifully she feeds herself we also have some periwinkles in here so if she wants to she can go and pick up periwinkles and uh, eat those as well next up on the list the fisher cat fishers are small carnivorous mammals native to north america it's a member of the mustelid family similar to a river otter or a sea otter this little guy had a fractured leg and he went to the tufts wildlife unit um, at tufts veterinary school and had a uh, his fracture mended but of course he was still a baby and he needs time these guys are also very arboreal so he needs to climb so we have platforms plus he has to heal from the injuries and so we need to make sure that he is able to you know, navigate his world effectively uh, plus they're just the most fascinating creatures to watch from a mustelid in the trees to one in the water we see how the cape wildlife center designs habitats for river otters we're here at the river otter habitat and what i really want to know is how you design this habitat to kind of mimic its natural environment well, river otters live in a, an area around waterways, so we have a pool and it's a little bit difficult if you haven't got, if you, we use a generic sort of habitat, so we, safety is the first thing, so we make sure they can't get out and nothing can get in to hurt them, and then we add elements. Play is really important for these guys, so cardboard boxes, how easy is that? <laughs> they can have a cardboard box a day. Yeah, and one of the things that we are going to build in will be more otter habitats, enrichment ideas. What I would really love to do is actually maybe build down the hill with a runway around, because you can imagine. Yeah. If we build a runway down, and we can run water down it. Is it a waterfall? Yes. <laughs> Guess <laughs> what? We are going to have hours, water slide. Of, hours of fun, but also it'll get them moving and, and fit and really agile and able to really negotiate their world. I'd love a water slide in my home. You and me both. Right? Yes. <laughs> oh. With a nice pool. Yeah. And the barbecue area. Oh. That's my dream. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> also, at some stage, we'll let that pool get a bit murky so that he can actually sense fish just by using whiskers and touch. Wow. So, we don't always leave it very murky though. We do like to see him swimming and uh, we get so much pleasure out of just watching him. Well, that's just another great example of prepping them for release and yes. making sure that they have heightened senses in that, in that regard. That's fascinating. Absolutely. Um, if we didn't do that, we wouldn't be doing our job as rehabilitators. Next on Trav's Travels, we'll see how the Cape Wildlife Center raises and prepares animals for release back into the wild. Make sure to check it out. Keep on traveling.